everyone, welcome to part three of the ZTD series where we are discussing the 10 habits of the ZTD planning and organization system. If you haven't seen parts one and two yet, I highly recommend that you check those out. I'll leave the links down in the description below. And in today's video, we are covering habits four and five. If we just plan things out, but don't actually do what we planned, then we defeat the purpose of planning. That's why habit number four is do. What that means is focusing more on getting things done versus on the system itself. ZTD encourages you to work on one task at a time while minimizing distractions as you work. First, choose one of the MITs that you have assigned to today to work on. The author suggests to decide whether or not you want to work on this task for a certain amount of time or until that task is done. For example, today one of my MITs was to work on decluttering my guest room closet. And it would really overwhelm me to have to declutter the entire closet in one day. So I've decided to break it down into baby steps, which the author refers to as tiny chunking. He also says to not worry about the task itself, just focus on getting started. Once you get over the hurdle of starting, completing that task becomes much easier. And try to be as excited about that task as you can. So for me, I really focus on imagining what that closet will look like once I have finished organizing it and decluttering it. And this really motivated me to get started and then I was able to use that momentum to complete the task. I decided I wanted to work on decluttering one box until it was done. Once I had sorted everything in that box into either a donate pile, a keep pile, or a trash pile, then I made sure to find a home for everything that was in that keep pile. I didn't just shove it back in the closet. And I put the donation items in the location in our house that's designated for items that we're going to give to Goodwill. And once that was complete, then I was done. I didn't go back into that closet and grab out another box and try to get the whole thing done in one day because I know that that is going to burn me out. If we break things down into manageable chunks, then we're more likely to get the whole project completed. If you decide that you want to work on a task for a certain amount of time, then set a timer for how long you want to work on it. And I really recommend, especially if you are someone who gets distracted by their phone easily, I know I do, I tend to go on Instagram and check Facebook messages, then you may want to use a kitchen timer. I have recently been using this timer that I bought online and you have the option of setting two timers, which I really like because I set the first timer to 25 minutes and five minutes for my breaks for the Pomodoro technique. And it also has this option where you can set it to high, low, or mute for the volume. If you set it to mute, then a red light will flash once the timer goes off and you don't have to hear that annoying sound. I like to do that when I'm editing videos because I can see the light out of the corner of my eye. I like to use this for laundry also, so I'll set one timer for when my washer will be done and one timer for the dryer so that I can make sure to take the clothing out immediately once it's done washing or drying. I'll link this one in the description down below, but you can also find similar ones at most department stores. You also want to eliminate anything that will distract you before you begin. So for example, if you get distracted by your phone, then you may want to either silence your phone or put it in a different room. If you need to work on a computer to complete your tasks, you may want to close all your web browsers and make sure you are not signed into your email. The author also suggests to reduce switching from task to task if possible. So let's say that despite all of your efforts to eliminate distractions, you still have 
your kids or your husband come up to you asking you questions, asking you to help them with something. So there are two ways you can handle this. If it is something that is not urgent, you can write down in your planner the day that you're going to work on it, probably later that day, and then get back to the task immediately. But if it is something that is urgent, then you probably want to write down a quick note, just on a sticky note, about where you left off so that when you do come back to that task, you are able to get started more quickly and then go and help that person or address whatever it is that is urgent. So for example, if my husband tells me that he has an unexpected flight and he needs to be dropped off at the train station in 20 minutes or he's gonna miss his flight, that would be classified as urgent. And I would very quickly just write down where I am in the video editing process so I can pick back up later on a sticky note, put that on my computer and head out the door. But if my husband comes to me and reminds me that we need to purchase food for our hamster Oliver, then I'm not gonna go to the store immediately. I'm going to schedule in my planner, maybe on Friday, that I will purchase that hamster food. And then I'll get back to my task. The author also suggests to take breaks when you need to. Several research studies have found that taking brief breaks can actually improve your ability to focus. For example, a 2011 study with 84 participants found that those in the group that took two very brief breaks while performing a repetitive computerized task for 50 minutes were able to maintain their focus throughout the experiment. Whereas participants that did not take brief breaks saw a decline in their performance on the task. And naturally, we can imagine that an increase in focus could lead to an increase in productivity. Some examples of quick breaks that you can take are getting a glass of water, going on a quick walk, watering the plants, getting the mail, stretching, um, emptying the dishwasher, doing a breathing exercise, or just doing a quick five minute tidy. I really like to do that. Um, just go around the house and just put things away. And personally, I really like to use the Pomodoro technique to determine how long to work on tasks and how long to take breaks for. And I'll link the video where I go in more detail about how the Pomodoro technique works down below. Habit five focuses on a system of context lists. Context lists are essentially to-do lists, but they're organized by different contexts. So maybe that's the location you're in or your time constraint, different categories, etc. For example, an at work list is referenced when you are physically at work. The at computer list is viewed when you are sitting at your computer so you can get it all done all at the same time. There are also at home, at errands, at calls, lists, etc. By having lists organized by context, your list has been whittled down to only tasks that are possible to work on at that moment. For example, if you are at the building where you work, you probably don't want your home tasks like do the laundry to be on the same list. It also helps you to batch your tasks and work on similar tasks all at the same time. So that saves you time overall. The book ZTD recommends that you keep your system as simple as possible. So the author only recommends having a maximum of six lists. Here's the example that the book uses of context lists that you could keep at work, which means all tasks related to your job. At errands, meaning tasks for when you are out and about. At calls, which are the phone calls that you need to make. At waiting for, these are for tasks you are waiting on someone else to either complete or to get back to you about. And you're putting these on hold because something or someone is preventing you from taking action. 
Add someday maybe for tasks you may want to complete in the future if you can find the time. And then add personal for all other tasks. So those are just six examples, but you can come up with your own categories and your own lists that you use. The three lists that I am currently using are at work, which are all of the tasks for my job and I physically keep that in my work planner on my desk at work. At someday maybe those are the very low priority tasks that I really hope to work on in the future if I can find the time, but they're just not a high enough priority to work on now. And then I have a master to-do list and I treat this like a catch-all for everything else. So the categories that go into my master to-do list are YouTube, which are the to-dos without a time constraint for this YouTube channel. House projects, those are the to-dos associated with each of the renovation projects that my husband and I are working on for our house. Home, those are things like errands, cleaning, any sort of home maintenance tasks that I need to complete in order to keep my home and household up and running. And then finally other, and those are just any sort of to-dos that don't fit into any of the other categories. But when are you supposed to add these tasks to the context list? Well, you could add them as you think of them, or you could add them at the end of the day, as you are processing those capture tools and those inboxes that we discussed in part one. The author recommends that you check these lists every single day, once in the morning and once at night, with the exception of the lists like at calls or at errands or at waiting. You would only need to check those when it is necessary. However, I'm choosing to do this a little bit differently because I don't want to be spending my time checking a bunch of lists every day. So I've kind of whittled it down to only three lists and I only check each of these lists maximum once a week. The only thing that I do check every day is my planner. So the someday maybe list I only check once a month and that is when I am creating the master list for the month. The items from the Someday Maybe list very rarely get transferred to the master list just because they are such a low priority, but it is nice to have those tasks written down if I do have extra time someday. The at work list is only checked once a week. It's on Friday evenings as I'm planning out the following work week. So I check it at work. And I only check my master to-do list every week. That's on Sunday evenings as I'm planning out the following week. And I pull the big rocks, the MITs, and any other tasks from that master list. The reason why I don't need other lists is because my master list is the catch-all for everything that isn't on the at work list or someday maybe list. For example, instead of on an at computer list, my computer related tasks are on the master list and then get transferred into my planner for that week. I try to schedule computer related tasks to be done at the same time in my planner into the same time block. So if I'm already going to be on my computer, then uh, I will, for example, try to check my email, send the tracking number to the giveaway winner and respond to YouTube comments all before turning my computer off rather than doing those at separate times throughout the day and having to turn my computer off and on again and again. The simple trusted system, according to the author, is composed of low maintenance, simple tools instead of complicated apps or software. It emphasizes getting things done instead of spending time on maintenance of the system itself. And it has inboxes, a calendar, a reference system, and lists. I hope you'll continue to watch this series as we learn and try out habits 6 through 10 in future videos and I'll see you next Saturday. Bye!